welcome to epg paatshala the current module is on community and identity within the course on community organization i am pk shahjahan professor and chairperson for the center for community organization and development practice at the tata institute of social sciences this module is essentially going to look at the nuances of understanding uh the concept of identity and how the interlinkage uh, of community and identity plays out in everyday life of uh, people in communities when we talk about communities there are uh, aspects of differences and similarities which exist and these aspects of similarities are in a way interfering with the idea and conception of communities so in this module we will look at uh, various conceptual understanding about communities the idea of uh, you know uh, social identity and social identity theories will be looked at further we will also look at in the context of globalization and the macro processes happening how identity conceptions of identity have changed the notions of community and experience of communities and what are those struggles which uh, exist in communities in the context of differential identities people have and that comes in 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 conflict with interests of uh, communities all you know uh, when we refer to the previous module on community the meanings and experiences we talked about traditional communities as as something where the uh, integral linkages exist through warmth and relationships and uh, belonging and everything existing at the same time we were also trying to probably in classical writings which talks about traditional communities and village communities as the the community the experience of community is described against the traditional communities which displayed whole lot of uh, sense of community in terms of warmth and relationships and everything but one of the question which i would like to ask in this session is has the traditional villages been homogeneous and devoid of conflicting interest the villages quite often talked about as you know uh, a container of communal ties has these communities the village communities been devoid of conflicting interest or has these communities been homogeneous the answer is no these communities also displayed wide varieties of you know differing interest the second question which comes to my mind is does the communities so communities of choice we talked about communities of choice in in the previous section whether these display a strong sense of community the weber's definition of community as a strong sense of belonging whether that strong sense of belonging exists in communities of choice the answer could be you know uh, different in different contexts there is no clear answer whether these communities of choice display strong sense of uh, belonging depending on the context it may vary now in the we, in the context of these differing notions of community the existence of various communities of choice and commun uh, geographic communities and things so like that in 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 while we discussing about various subtypes of community we also talks about the idea of communities lost so in this does this all give a signal that this the so called traditional sociological communities are no more existing but still we see that these community people are you know bonded together because of various reasons people are bonded together and there are formations of communities or you know relationship which are getting stronger and stronger what is that something which strongly connects people together is something which we need to uh, probably look look upon to me something which is connecting communities and people together is the idea of identity the identity is something which is connecting people very very strongly and what forms of identity does that identity is a community identity or a sectarian identity or a religious identity these are all things which we need to look at you know before getting into that uh, uh, analysis let us look at what do we mean by identity identity is actually defining boundaries and maintaining boundaries it's all about defining boundaries and maintaining boundaries when i say i i have this particular identity i'm defining a boundary around which my identity is created when you say you are student a community you are defining the student community with a boundary that people who are not 
uh, studying in colleges and schools and things like that could be considered as not the, the so-called typical student community. So it, it defines uh, the boundary, it maintains a boundary, that's how identity is being created. So in that process, individual also would like to declare certain aspects of identity as their predominant identity. So it is also my idea of identity, what, who, who am I? I define certain features, probably others might be uh, defining something else, my several other attributes, but identity that an individual wants to declare is also uh, 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 the defining feature of one's own self. At the same time, when we move on with further analysis, it is also a dynamic concept. Identity is a dynamic concept. When we say dynamic concept, you know, people, you know, could change their identities. You know, probably I could be, uh, uh, you know, somebody who is, you know, traveling to other countries and settling for work. Your identity of becoming an Indian, become non-resident Indian, NRIs. So you change your identities. So in different situations, you change your identity. It's not a static concept. It is experiential, it is contextual, it is depending on how do you want to define, how do others want to define. Quite often we talk about identity as something which not only what you would like to present yourself as, but also what others like to see yourself as. So it is something, a, a, kind, of a, a kind of a dynamic concept. Identity also refers to the ways in which individuals and collectives are distinguished in their social relations. You relate with somebody else. So this, this distinction between identities of individual and collectives vis-a-vis -vis others is also a very, very important defining factor of uh, uh, identity. Now, when we discuss identity, it is also marking a difference. I told you about the similarities and differences. I talk about similarities, you know, people talking the same language, a, a, you know, they have a special identity, you know, people talk Mara, uh, Mara, Marathi language, we call Marathis, or we, uh, you know, people speak, you know, probably Tamil, we call Tamilians. So, so we form idea of community around the sense of identity you uh, attribute. But at the same time, it also differentiates with somebody else. It excludes certain people. When we say South Indian or a North Indian, we are excluding the other part. So it is also a form of excluding others within that, against the members within that boundary of, of who I am, who we are, who, uh, uh, and how that is different from other people. Now, in this conception, what we are trying to identify, what we are trying to understand is that community emerges as a fluid network of relations, fluid network of relations of identities which exist in communities. So in this process, you would see that the community which we discussed in the previous module, talking about various ways in which people are connecting each other. So in this, in, in, a, in a kind of a globalized world, we could see that there is a spatial dispersal is happening at the same time, agglomeration on the base of identities. You have people, cutting across, you know, you could uh, think about various diasporic communities, communities of, you know, coming from a particular state in India, forming, you know, you have, you know, a strong, you know, Sikh community presence in Canada. So you have different communities which are formed by their own identities and which is not necessarily connected in or contained in the social uh, or a geographic uh, space. So the spatial dispersal on one side and on the other side, you are aggl agglomerating on the basis of certain kind of identities. Now what essentially we are talking about is that identity has become a prism of analyzing contemporary social relations. So the social and political life in communities are defined by the concept of identity, how you define your identity, how you relate with other people and things like that. These are all defining how you form a sense of community. So one could see that, you know, uh, individuals who identify with a group, with a particular group of identity also feel a strong attraction to the group. 
this is not only for people who are having a you know you know social uh, group of uh, people who are having a high social status you know the the whole idea of uh, dalit mobilization which happened in the country uh, is also a significant example that you know, people with low status also identify strongly with their identity groups so it's not necessarily that it's a social status which defines a sense of connect and identity but it's also this inherent qualities inherent you know ideas around which one forms identity which makes significant uh, uh, um, uh, way in which we are trying to uh, identify people and you know form the sense of identity now in this in this process what we are essentially talking about commun uh, the identity is that it is a process of self categorization self categorization in the sense that you are defining yourself from others so locating oneself in the larger context of the society you define yourself it's a self categorization from among other people you know classical uh, uh, you know uh, uh, work by erickson eric erickson uh, talks about the personhood within the conception of identity you are defining a person within that social concept uh, social co uh, context called uh, 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 the society or community and you define that identity within that so all these kind of ideas are in a way talking about the boundaries which defines your identity and you know it, it also goes on further of social comparison and distinction how you compare with other communities how you socially compare with another community you define your own characteristics say for example you know a uh, uh, european identity versus a french identity european is an overarching identity at the same time french forms a part of that european identity or in indian versus bengali or indian versus you know uh, a person from gujarat gujarati or whatever so these are different notions of identity which uh, actually uh, forms a part of this entire uh, process of identity formation um, when we were talking about uh, the identity as a self categorization social comparison and uh, identification and things like that we are essentially talking about how the self categorization uh, where i form a part of we so you categorize you as an individual to be part of a larger community so you self categorize yourself and to be part of a larger uh, uh, kind of a community so uh, you know there is there is a, the sense of boundary which i was talking about is essentially at different levels barth in his work uh, talks about psychological cultural social and political boundaries which you create you talk about uh, you know uh, a psychological boundary you create you you have certain kind of inclination to interact with certain sections of population so you have a psychological affinity towards certain sections of the society you may have a psychological you know uh, uh, difficulty in associating with somebody else you your cultural sphere in terms of your uh, you how do you create a cultural boundary you live in say for example the 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 Uh, the the community the bihari community in mumbai they celebrate chhat puja so the idea is that their cultural specificity whether they are in bihar or in their wherever they are working they try to recreate that cultural space so you create a, a boundary around you around a particular celebration of a festival so that's a cultural uh, boundary which you are creating similarly the social and political uh, uh, boundaries which you create i could give you the example of you know uh, 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 the the marathi manus debate debate which is happening in in maharashtra you know uh, the idea certain political parties are trying to say that they serve for the 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 the, the so called marathi manus or the mumbai kar or whatever you call it so you are trying to appeal to different senses of people where their identity is anchored when i was doing a research in a community they were talking about you know i was talking in the context of uh, communal uh, conflicts and they were talking about this particular community is is uh, uh, you know a marathi marathi community they are essentially talking about marathi hindus they are not talking about people who speak marathi there are a lot of people uh, including muslims from the konkan region who uh, talks marathi language 
who have surnames of Marathi like Dalvi, Khot, these are surnames which are shared by both Hindus and Muslims. But the moment they talk about Muslims, Muslims are a separate category. But Marathis means essentially Marathi Hindus. So these kind of boundaries are even you know symbolic boundaries which you create. So there are several, several boundaries are being created in the process of asserting identities and identifying yourself within a larger socio-political context. So this process of uh, uh, you know self-categorization within the larger context is to be seen in the context of how do people try to identify oneself, how do people try to compare within a larger society and how do people want to identify themselves within this larger conception of uh, uh, identities. Very importantly, we need to look at uh, the work by Tajfel and Turner, which is the social identity theory, which talks about the personal self as the defining factor with, within which, uh, with, within a larger context of the several self you have. The social identity theory not only talks about you as an individual self, but also in the context of a larger uh, context where you have a larger identities or multiple identities, within that you are identifying your personal self depending on the context. So the group membership which creates an in-group or a self-categorization, it also defines aspects of inclusion. It is not uh, you know, emanating from the, uh, you know, uh, the idea that, you know, uh, there are, there are, you know, similarities, all forms of similarities within the group, but at the same time, you have similarities defined on the basis of identities which you define as your characteristic. It could be a linguistic uh, identity. You say, okay, the other people who are not talking the similar language is, 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 a, is a different uh, group altogether. Now, Coming to the three major factors of uh, social identity theory by Tajfel and Turner is one is a social categorization which I mentioned about. You are categorizing within the larger process. That's a social categorization. The process of defining which group you and other person or persons belong to. This is a basic individual characteristics which defines you from other people. The second uh, important cognitive process within this social identity theory is a social identification. Social identification essentially means that the, the, the process by which you or another person or persons identify with an in-group more overtly. You as is, identify yourself, you categorize from others on one side and on the other side you identify with a specific group within the society. So that's a social identification you do within that group. You clearly form a part of an in-group within the society. And the third I mentioned about earlier as well is a social comparison. Your own self or self-concept in context or in comparison to other people's uh, uh, ideas, other people's identities. All these becomes closely meshed with the perception of group membership and identities. Now, when we move on from this idea to a postmodern analysis, I bring in again uh, Zygmunt Bauman in this uh, interesting work, Identity. He talks about the fact that there is a spectacular rise in the identity discourse in the 20th century onwards. So this idea, this uh, the, the idea of how identity has become an increasingly important social category, social conception, where people's relations uh, within the community and outside are defined by this idea of uh, 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 identity. He talks about there is something which has gone wrong with the formation of identity in the postmodern era. What he means is that in the age of globalization, where much of the basis of anchoring of people's identity is lost, in one sense, and people used to anchor their identities to their local communities or the immediate communities, the family and several other kind of ideas is getting disintegrated in a big way. So in that sense, in the age of globalization, which eroded most of the basis around which people used to anchor, so there, then people started becoming restless about their own identities and then started you know probably asserting identities and trying to find your own identity groups within that context. So this uh, has led to uh, very very 
different uh, you know undesirable outcomes within the society on one side you could see you know the the uh, if you look at the uh, the slum communities the poor people living in slum communities are not only poor they are also criminalized we say that this particular slum community has a lot of drug addiction happening a lot of crime happening and things so like that you know there are this is very clear there are very clear examples in in, in, in the ghettos in uh, chicago and many other places that these ghettos where poor people are living are also termed as you know uh, uh, you know problem estates and you know uh, uh, criminal uh, a den of criminals and things like that so those kind of ideas of conception identities have also enmeshed with a lot of other ideas which are coming in in, in the form of uh, uh, various process which is happening in, in in the process of globalization so what happens in 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 the in, in the post modern kind of a social context is that the disembeddedness of people they are anchoring within the community when it is loose and their identities are become significantly predominant ways where we people try to find their their uh, uh, you know relationship and things like that so in that process when we are looking at uh, uh, the globalization as, as as a process which impact upon relationships of people this transformation of temporal and spatial limitations which is a significant idea around globalization has led to many of these undesirable outcomes so though the globalization is primarily economic in nature gradual integration of socio cultural and political spheres led to this uh, uh, situation where people are struggling for their identity because the 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 sense of identity sense of anchoring which is lost in the process is trying to be recreated by various forms of affiliations and affinities which are uh, which people try to recreate and that's how the 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 idea of identity has become much more predominantly an important uh, uh, you know discourse within the context of uh, 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 the the changes happening uh, globally you know when i talk about struggles struggles of communities struggles of people there are struggles at uh, different levels the first level is at the individual level individual identity was based on the position of the individual within the social hierarchy in the traditional societies you had a social position within the society and that in individual is emancipated from the ascribed inherited sense of identity in the globalization context when i am saying this i am trying to refer to the fact that people used to anchor their identity to their caste or community or uh, other identities these slightly get loosened which is a positive uh, symbol of emancipation and things like that at the same time there is no much of anchoring happening in other places so people in the process of globalization where this sense of community is lost your anchoring to certain community concepts are weakening then people are looking out for other ways of uh, connecting and that other ways of connecting is actually uh, leading to increased sense of identity at the individual level so the fragmentation which happened in the societies because of the globalization process has led to agglomeration on the base of certain identities where you can find your anchoring somehow you move on to the next level of subnational level in a globalized world when this melting down of boundaries of nations and things like that is happening many traditional community identities are you know are become you know not so well knit as it used to be in the traditional communities these contradictory forces of globalization which is you know connecting the globe to a larger level and at the same time localization in terms of formation of identity groups and things like that these are pulling people in different directions so this has led to lot of subnational politics uh, and you know formation at the subnational levels you could look at uh, you know in the post uh, you know cold war era the many of the once the nation state has formed many of the conflicts are happening within the nation states and not across nation states the reason is that people are trying to find identities and those identity interests are not met within the the ideas of nation state people are trying to form subnational uh, uh, formations and things like that so then at a subnational level it is challenging uh, it is it is posing huge challenges 
in terms of uh, anchoring people's identity and thereby dealing with larger ideas of community and uh, things like that. If you look at a national level, these contradictory forces which I was talking about, which is impacting on the individual uh, because of the globalization, localization, has led to populations living in heterogeneous states to be in conflict with each other. The ideas of the, the racial discriminations, racial wars which is happening in, the, in, in several parts of the West or the caste conflicts which are happening, the religious conflicts which are happening, these are happening at the national level where different identities are pulling people in different directions and thereby people are trying to find their own identity groups within, within the nation. So, from the individual to subnational to national level, these ideas of identities or formation of identities are posing significant challenges, and there people are trying to you know, are struggling to deal with this conception of uh, this idea of or experience of identity in different ways. The formation of uh, various caste-based movements or you know various uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, uh, diasporic communities which are existing, all these things are ways to find anchoring for their own identities. Uh, and so you could see the, in 1980s, the identity and ethnic, ethnicity became uh, the center stage in Indian politics with uh, the backward class movement and caste-based uh, movements and things like that uh, taking strong uh, positions in the in, in political scenario. So, the logic of community formation and identi identitarian mobilization is not always independent of the logic of class and capital. However, it is a factor of people's ability to identify and find strong sense of connection within their identity formations. So, in this process, what we are left with is something called heterophobia, which uh, Bowman talks about as heterophobia, a phobia for others. You have a hatred or a, a phobia against other you like to be in the similar community so that you can have you know support on each other the multicultural societies are creating significant challenges for societies because of the fact that people are trying to find their own uh, anchoring within this uh, this identity formations there is a process of alienation which is happening within this notion of community because of uh, in, uh, increasing play of identity in their in their uh, daily life such of such processes are leading to casteism communalism and subnationalism that's the effect of you know uh, the identity and uh, strengthened identity uh, formations which are uh, creating troubles for the sense of community which we are talking about